like uh, so what are the ai services available from microsoft as your cloud platform so we'll be talking about tools like machine learning studios and then the machine learning service uh, from microsoft azure and then we'll get to uh, explore uh, how we can set up an environment if I have to create a model. If I have to do the training on the data in order to create a model. So how am I supposed to set up the environment? So what are the components, the environments needed in order to train a model? And once the model is being trained, then we can subsequently go and deploy the model that could be used from any application that can be consumed from any application. Now, we started with a typical uh, small language model, like which is basically to be used to predict on the input so whatever the input that you are going to supply to the model and model can predict the relevant with the relevant context but uh, the creating of the model is being uh, introduced uh, in different workload like i talk about the machine learning and then we can also create the model using custom vision. This is a AI service, artificial intelligence service, which is available on Microsoft Azure. So we are going to see that, you know, how we can create custom model for service like the custom visions or maybe the computer vision. That would be an extended version of computer visions when you get into the custom visions. And then again, we'll be talking about large language model. And that is also being uh, used from the Microsoft uh, Azure uh, AI service, that is Microsoft Open AI service. The Open AI service is going to use uh, LLM. But uh, how we can enhance this LLM with our own data in order to create a new model and that can be test against our own specific domain specific data. So we are going to go and talk about the, the various way of working with model. That is machine learning model. Whether it is a small language model or whether it is a large language model. So it's an overview. We are going to take a look without going into a deep dive without looking at the deep implementation of those model, but this particular webinar is going to give you insight. So where the model is being used, what kind of services internally go and consume the model, you know, from the AI and machine learning point of views. So if tomorrow, if you think of getting into the field of machine learning and the AI, artificial intelligence, so you'll be able to deep dive all the services that we would be discussing. But uh, yes, it's a limited time. <coughs> we won't be able to complete all of all the AI or ML specific uh, services and resources available on Microsoft Cloud, but of course, I mean, you will get in an insight to the AI and the ML ecosystem from the Microsoft Azure Cloud platform. So that is the agenda for this particular webinar. So let me introduce myself. My name is Navjoti Barua. I'm working as an AVP technology at Synergetics. So I have been working with the different solutions backed by the technology like .NET, Java, Python, Angular, and React. 
and platform like the cloud platform like Azure and AWS at this moment. Some certified from uh, the Microsoft, the certifications course, as you can see, right from the Azure administrator to Azure AI engineer. Now, we are going to start with uh, the fundamental of AI. So uh, because AI and ML is ML is a subset of AI. OK, so. The all the AI capabilities that we are going to explore. It is backed by always machine learning model. Which is basically a trained model based on. The historic data or the data that is being collected over a period of times. And the ML can train those data with the help of an algorithms. And subsequently we can produce a model and that model can be published and consumed by the AI application. In order to predict. Based on. Your prompt or based on your input that would be given to the AI based application. Now, when you talk about AI, artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence is going to mimic. The human capabilities like today, the human is doing a lot of things in a day to day life within your organization or outside of the organization. Now we are offloading most of the job to the artificial intelligence because the artificial intelligence is capable of doing the human task. Of course, with a limitation, but yes. There are few category. Uh, the, 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 the category or maybe as you can, the few task which is belongs to a particular category like predicting the outcome, recognizing the abnormal events like anomaly detectors. Interpreting the visual input like it could be video or audios. Uh, or uh, images understanding the language and engage, engaging the conversations like you can start. Doing conversation with your AI based applications, you can command the AI can listen to the command and subsequently execute uh, your command to get a response what you have asked for. Or AI can get you the appropriate information from a knowledge base. The question is that how those capability is. Is 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 possible? You know, we are talking about different capabilities. This is typically done by the human. Now today we say now this is going to be done by an application and we call them as an AI application. The question is that how it is possible, how the AI application is capable of behaving like a human. So as I said before, also all this capability is backed by the machine learning model, the cognitive behaviors that is being exhibited by the artificial intelligence is being completely controlled by the machine learning. So it means they might have used a specific model to do all kind of operations what we are looking at. Then coming back to the fundamental of. Machine learning, then we need to know. How the machine learning is going to help us. To create model that subsequently we can make use of the model from our applications to do all kind of capabilities what we are discussing at this moment. But the beyond machine learning, as I say, the AI ecosystem is really robust. The machine learning is one of the component. This is basically going to produce a predictive model based on the data and the statistics. Which is being operated by a particular algorithm. This is what we call as a foundation for an AI. We started with the ML to get into the AI. But. When you extend these conversations like uh, 
talking about the capabilities, the capabilities in context of the videos and images and audios, and that will be basically uh, produced or may be taken care of by the computer vision. So there is a set of service around the vision who can really go and process the visual contents like an image or a videos and come back and tell us what is there in the image, what is there in the videos and so on and so forth. That is the AI capability. Otherwise, I, I would have deployed an individual who could have gone and see the image and tell me what is there in that image or maybe analyzing that particular image. But today we don't need a human to do that. The application itself is capable of analyzing an image, analyzing a videos, analyzing an audios. Like in context of videos and audios, like we can do the same thing for a natural language processing. Like you can give an instruction to the AI by telling what you want from an AI. Or you can give an instruction by writing a text in a natural language. So it could be in a form of voice, it could be in a form of text, and it could be in a different languages. It is not necessarily that you will be using only the English language to interact with the AI system. You can make use of any language to make AI understand what you are asking for. So your AI need to understand the most of the language today we use to communicate among us. Similarly, we can also communicate with the AI system by using those natural language. So your AI is capable of understand the intent of your text or command and subsequently AI should be able to produce the result based on your input, the based on your command. So like uh, the language is what we talked about and, and, and there may be an extended version of the AI implementations using document intelligence. So like, for example, you have millions of documents. Now you want to read those documents and translate those texts written in the document to a particular language that has to be done automatically without any human interventions. Not only that, it is not going to go and read only the text if there is an image and that also can be read by the document intelligence with the help of some kind of optical character recognitions to describe so what is there in the image along with the text so it is being used to create some kind of knowledge base that is what the subsequently we talk about knowledge mining. So today, the AI knows how to organize the information for a particular business. Because today you might go and ask a question. The human may not answer that questions because your questions can be very specific. From a particular product or a, from, from a particular uh, events or maybe from, from a particular uh, uh, task. The context can be different, but yes, the people might go and ask questions within this context to the AI system. Now, how the AI system can bring the relevant answer to the end user? So there would be an intelligence knowledge mining that would be created with the help of artificial intelligence. So rather than reading a book and, and telling or, or maybe answering the questions rather than just reading an FAQ and answering the questions. So if the questions would be different slightly, if the answer is not available in the pair of Q&A, then it would be difficult for AI to answer this. But today with the help of knowledge mining, you can ask any questions because internally they have arranged those information in in a 
particular uh, structure. And that will enable to answer any kind of questions that you are going to ask from any domain. So we need to build that kind of knowledge mining, knowledge base with the help of different cognitive service, different AI service, which is available from the Microsoft Azure. In that case also, it is driven by the model. So we do not have to forget about the model every time because you need to train the AI with the help of a model that they should be able to answer the queries because the data will be going in in order to create a model. So because the model would be created with those data, but that could be enhanced with the help of multiple AI related services to enhance those informations. Collaborate the information to give you the appropriate result, appropriate answer. And then finally today, the top of the or maybe talk of the world, a talk of the town is generative AI. People started talking about Gen AI. So Gen AI is all about creating content by using large language model. That is also model driven implementations in the field of artificial intelligence. But these models are very robust, unlike the model that I'm referring to for our own business data or maybe for the languages, for the visions, you know, uh, or for the machine learning small language model that what we are talking about. So LLM, the large language model are really robust in compared to the small language model. But as I said, the generative AI is a complete different. Uh, the area of workload so where we can generate content. So when you say generate content, it could be any content. You want to write an application, so you can go back to the Gen AI and ask for what type of application that you want to write. So Gen AI should be able to write the application, write the letters, write an essay, write a blogs, create a Q&A from a given the text given input, given paragraphs, given information. So bottom line is that what we are seeing is. You may be using either one of the services, one of the resources, one of the technology, what we are talking about, but eventually that is driven by a machine learning model. So it could be a small language model. It could be a large language model. As I said, the large language model is the talk of the town because they are capable of doing really, really, uh, you know, uh, the intensive work. So to to offload a lot many uh, the work that is being done by the human today. OK, so that is what. Uh, the common AI workload, but yes, of course, apart from those workload, what I'm talking about, there are more uh, the workload which is made available by Microsoft Azure. Since we are just talking about the overview. In this webinar, so we'll stick to the overview only. The another important aspect of building an AI solutions, AI and ML solution is all about responsible AI. So everyone need to be responsible for developing AI system. So what kind of model that you are going to build? Whether this model is going to be used for the betterment of the human mankind or maybe destroying the human mankind. So that you have to take a call. And that's how the responsible AI will come into the picture. So responsible AI is a set of guidelines that will do the hand holding. Whoever is getting into the space of the artificial intelligence today, because they need to talk about data privacy. They need to talk about limited access. They need to talk about the abusive languages. They need to talk about. You know, on the sexual content. They need to talk about the harmful content or so whatever it may be. 
So it means the AI, because what you are going to feed to the AI, the AI is going to work accordingly. But are you allowed to do whatever you want to do? It is not possible on the Microsoft Cloud platforms. Once you are using AI from the Microsoft as your cloud platform, you will be restricted in every occasion. Until you can provide. The specifications of your. Product or your organizations from where you are going to go and use those critical AI services. So this is uh, important. So. When you have to build a model, when you have to consume a model. When you really need to extend that model into the AI capabilities, so we have to go through those guidelines. So they have categorically talk about multiple parameters, but yes, the bottom line, what I'm saying is that you won't be able to do whatever you want to do that need to be validated. By the Microsoft as your any given point in time before it going into the production or before you get access to the the underlying system, underlying AI uh, resources or underlying AI services. Now coming back to the fundamental of AI is that what we talk about the machine learning. So we'll talk about quick introduction of the machine learning and then we'll go and talk about the tools and technology from the Microsoft Azure. So how the machine learning is being used from the Microsoft Azure. So it is just an again overview without going into the deep dive to to get the details and then after machine learning, then we'll go to the applied. AIs. So where implicitly the model is going to be used or explicitly we are going to see how to create the model, how to basically go and make use of the model to do different things. So when you talk about the fundamental of machine learning, So we always talk about the three blocks. In fact, the four blocks. So the first block is the data. I need to collect that data. As you can see in the left hand side, we talk about the data. This is the training data. And that training data is consist of. The past observations. In most cases, the observations include the. Observed attributes or the features of things being observed. They are known values. Of things that you want to train a model to predict. So the mathematical terms you can use. To refer the features, as you can see, it would be use a variable name X. And the label would be Y. So it means the Y can be defined with a list of attributes. These are the X1, X2 and X3. So Y could be a, any object, anything that you want to predict. This is what the observation. This is what the mathematical equations. The features is being represented by an X and the label is represented by the Y. So every Y is being. Defined by a list of X. These are attributes. Like for example. So I said I need to predict the fruits like an a banana. So the banana is nothing but the Y. But what would be the features of this banana? Maybe the size of the banana, the color of the banana. The appearance of this banana. The species of this banana and so on and so forth. 
OK, so this is this is basically a kind of in order to identify in order to predict the fruits called banana. So I need to use those features. Eventually we are going to get in Y. Now. I may have a list of bananas. With the varieties of bananas that we might have, so that could be collectively goes under the training data. The features of a bananas. It may not be only one type of banana, so there may be multiple types of bananas that we can extract the features of those bananas, attributes of the bananas, and then we have represented as the Y. Now with those data, we want to train. So training is basically what it does. It's figuring out the relationship between the X and Y as a function by applying an algorithms. So when you talk about an algorithms. It could be any type of algorithms. We are not going to go into the detail of that, but an algorithm is applied to the data. To try to determine the relationship between the features and the level and generalize the relationship as a calculations that can be performed on the X to calculate the Y. The specific algorithm used. Depends on the kinds of predictions, predictive problems you are trying to solve. So we are going to discuss more on this, what kind of algorithms that you need to apply on what type of predictions that you are looking for. But the basic principle is to try to fit the data to the function. In which the value of the features can be used to calculate the level, and that is all about the algorithm. So once the algorithm is being applied to the data, the raw data with features. Then subsequently. It will go and create the model. That is the model, so result of the algorithm. Is a model that encapsulate the calculations derived by the algorithms as a function. That is basically called as a Y equal to FX. That is the equations. The model can be represented because the model is going to encapsulate it, everything what is being done by the algorithms and make it available to the end user. So once the model is being created, now you are ready to inferencing the data with the help of model to predict. The incoming or predict on the input so I can go and get a banana and I do not know what type of fruit it is. So Y equal to FX model can tell me by looking at the features of the banana that it should be able to predict that. Fruits called banana the Y what we are talking about. So training model can be used for inter uh, inferencing, so that is what we are talking about. So the model is essentially a software program that encapsulate the function produced by the training process. You can input a set of features values and received as an output. A predictions of the corresponding level what we have been talking about because the output from the model is a prediction that was calculated by the function. And not an observed values, so you will often see output from this function would be always shown as a Y. The Y hat, this is basically what we talk about. So why? So this is this is what equation term what we have been talking about at this moment. So it is a kind of the estimated and predicted values. In the regressions or other predictive model that are term. The Y that the value carries. So why is going to tell me? By just evaluating the X, so what exactly the what would be the name of the fruits in our context? What we have been discussing. 
So this is a kind of the workflow that we are talking about in the model, but uh, we can go and kind of discuss a little bit of uh, machine learning things because we are about to use the machine learning from Microsoft Azure. So when you talk about the machine learning as a primary concept, so it is being divided into two type of learning. So what is machine learning? Because the machine can learn from the data on their own. That's how it's called as a machine learning, like human learn. So how you guys has learned to speak? So similarly, because uh, you keep practicing how to speak. So it's a. Uh, how you have. Uh, you have acquired the skill of writing a code because some point in time you have learned how to write a code. So as a human, we keep learning. Every now and then. OK, and then we produce based on our knowledge. Now, similarly, the machine can also do the same stuff. But while the machine is going to learn from the data, it could be two type. It could be supervised machine learning or it could be unsupervised machine learning. So supervised machine learning is a general term for a machine learning algorithm in which the training data includes both the features values and the label like we discussed in the previous deck. So supervised machine learning is used to train model by determining a relationship between the features and the label. In the past observation, so the unknown label can be predicted for the features in future cases. So it means whatever the data that we are training under the banner of the supervised machine learning, all of them will have two. Two things, one the features and the label itself. The features like as I said, I was talking about the banana. So all kind of attributes about the banana as well as it is being tagged as a banana. As well as it is being called as a banana. But if you go below the supervised. Machine learning, so we get to see two type of algorithms. That could be used under the banner of the supervised machine learning, so regressions and the classification. So what regression does? So regression is a form of supervised machine learning. In which a level predicted by the model is a numeric value. So it is going to give us a numeric values. So like for example, the number of ice cream sold on a given day based on the temperature, rainfall or a wind speed. That would be the, the features in order to predict the number of ice cream that can be sold on a particular day. So if it is hot, then of course the temperature would be hot and we are going to sell more ice cream. If maybe rainfall or maybe coal, then the the quantity that we are going to sell for an ice cream may be reduced. So that could be predicted with the help of those the features, but eventually we are going to get a number and that is the regression does. The classification also done in different way it is being divided into a two the binary classifications and multi-class classifications so binary classifications the label determines whether the observed item is or not and an instance of a specific class or put maybe another way the binary classification model predict one or two mutually exclusive outcome for example whether a patient is at risk for a diabetic. Based on the clinical matrix like weight, age, blood glucose level and so on. So whether that person is diabetic or not, so we can classify it based on the matrix. So what could be the matrix? What is the weight of that particular person? What is the age of that particular person? What is the blood glucose level of that particular persons and many more on what basis it would be detected as this person is diabetic or non-diabetic. 
So that is the classifications that we are talking about, the binary classification. Then going with the multi-class classification also. So multi-class classification extend the binary classification to predict a level that represent one or one of the one of the multiple possible classes. Like as you can see, there may be three different species of penguin. Like they could be Edley or a Gento or a, a Sintrap. So these are the different species of uh, penguin as you can see on the screen. But uh, eventually we have to tell me uh, when a penguin will come into the system. So what class that penguin belongs to because we are talking about the three different spaces. Right, so that is something that we just need to figure out. So if I have to predict a particular class, that would be a multi-class uh, in that context. So, so what would be the attributes of Adley or what would be the attributes of Zento? What would be the attributes of Sintrap? So these are different species, as I said, the, the penguin have. So they might have a different attributes, different features to identify that they belongs to a particular class. So we need to go and create a model with the help of algorithms like multi-class classifications in order to operate this kind of you know, uh, solutions or this kind of um, the cases what we are discussing. The another, the, the point what the machine learning talks about the unsupervised, which is just opposite to the supervised because the data that is going to be come under, data that is going to come under the unsupervised machine learning, which is not labeled, it's a pretty, we we do not know what exactly this object is. It is being not tagged. So unsupervised machine learning involve the training model using data that consists only of a features value without any known level. So unsupervised machine learning algorithm determines the relationship between the features of the observations and uh, in, in the training data. But it is also can be operated under the banner of clustering. The similar items are grouped together. The most common form of unsupervised machine learning is the clustering. A clustering algorithm identifies the similarities between the observations based on their features and group them into a discrete clusters. So like here, for example, the group of similar flowers based on their size, number of leaves, number of petals, and so on and so forth. Identify the group of similar customer based on demographic attributes and processing behaviors. It could be, it, it can goes into a different use cases, then you can figure it out. But what essentially we are talking about, how internally the machine learning is going to work for all of us. You know, so what basically ultimate goal of a machine learning, as you can see, it is all about data. It's all about algorithms. It's all about training. It's all about model. It's all about using that model to predict the incoming data. So it could be in a form of penguin. It could be in a form of the human to talk about the diabetic or non-diabetic. It could be in a form of numeric values to tell how many ice cream that I can sell in a particular day given a conditions, or maybe how we are going to go and do uh, work with some kind of clusters of uh, object who, who, who basically share the same set of attributes, almost the same set of attributes that is basically puts under the clustering. So similar items are grouped together into a group based on the common features like what we are talking about here in common features and the characteristics. So having said that what we are discussing, so it is the fundamental of machine learning. And uh, yes, this is what we talk about in the beginning, some model 
the y equal to fx. And it is a continuous process. The multiple training iterations with the different algorithms and the parameters because we can keep testing. Until my model can predict appropriately, so I can keep changing the algorithms. My data one to train want to be tame. But while this typically the data is going to be trained with the help of an algorithms, the data would be training data. Uh, that the actual data would be uh, split into two, the training data. And the validations data. So you always apply an algorithm to fit the training data to a model. The training train model encapsulate the relationship in a data. And you can use this model to generate the predictions from the validation data. And you can keep evaluating the matrix to compare the predicted versus actual level, which is supervised. Or measure the cluster separations, which is unsupervised, and keep on repeating the task all over again. So the learning component, I mean, like what we are talking about, learning component of the machine learning occurs during the training. The training can learn from the data and we try to capture the relationship between the features and the level in the model. The training is the action of iteration on an algorithm to best fit or encapsulate those relationships one point in times and that goes to the absolute model that can maintain the accuracy while they are going to use in the prediction. Now, the one step ahead of the machine learning. So we understood the flow of a machine learning, so data training and uh, what you call as uh, uh, and model and algorithms and eventually the prediction. And then we talk about. Uh, and and then 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 we talk about a kind of, you know, uh, incorporating those model with the AI application. But yes, the sometimes the machine learning can come with some limited. Uh, the options because machine learning may not be uh, equivalent to how the human can learn and human can predict or human can talk after learning, human can produce after learning. So that may not be uh, the feasible in, in, in the machine learning, and that's how the deep learning has come into the picture. So the deep learning is an advanced form of the machine learning that tries to emulate the way the human brains learn. The key to the deep learning is the creations of an artificial, artificial neural network that simulate the electrochemical activities in the biological neurons by using mathematical functions. That is something what the human neural network is going to be equivalent with the artificial neural network. So how human works, the similarly you can also create. A neural network artificially. And that is what we are talking about. So artificial neural networks are made up of multiple layers. Of neurons. Essentially defining a deeply nested function. And this architecture is the reason. The technique is referred to as a deep learning and the model produced by it are. Often referred to as a deep neural network DNNS. You can use deep neural network for many kind of machine learning problem, including regressions and classifications as well as more specialized model for new natural language processing and the computer vision. But yes, the bottom line is that we just need to figure out how human learns by using a neural 
neurons in your brain, the similarly that would be an equivalent to an artificial neural network that you would be building artificially is to learn from the data. So for the better understanding how a deep learning network model works, so you can see the few detail. We will not go into the detail of uh, a deep learning, but yes. Now here is also a kind of X represented in the beginning that talks about the data consists of some measurement of a penguin. These are the measurement of penguins here, especially specifically. Uh, the measurements could be the length of the penguin. Uh, length of the penguins uh, big or maybe the depth of the penguins big. The length of the penguins flippers or maybe penguin width. So these are the kind of features that that can be talking about X1, X2, X3 and X4. And then eventually it could be label. So eventually, uh, it, eventually we need to predict a level because it is not uh, a kind of uh, level in the beginnings. So only we are going to operate on the features. OK, so eventually we need to figure out the why. And based on the score, the highest score, so we can predict. So what type of penguins that uh, either one of them? So whence the penguin will come? learning from those data but in between the x and y because initially the deep learning did not know about what would be the species of this particular uh, penguin they only know the features of this particular penguins as i said it could be the height of the beak or width of the beak or you know length of the flippers and uh, the weight of this particular penguins so as many attributes that you can bring in as a features and give it to the neural network. So in order to get the Y at the end. So what is does in? So this is basically, you know, this this particular the features that we are talking about typically is being represented by the vectors. This is a, this is a kind of representation of the vector. For the penguin. The observations fed into the input layer. Of. This is the input layer of the neural network. Which consists of neurons for its X values, as you can see for its X values, there would be neurons in that network. So. This values will be fed across the multiple layers. So this is how it's being compared with the human a brain, like the neuron from the human brain, how it is being utilized to learn something. Because the human brains also have the millions of neurons and the layered by layer. So like your uh, information should be penetrated to the layers and they should be able to recognize or identify it or maybe finalize with an outcomes. That is all about the learning what is done by the human being. So there would be a mathematical function like FX as you, as you can see. Uh, so this is uh, uh, your X value or maybe the Y would be the width of uh, explicitly getting a, a particular constant values or maybe anything that we can refer in that context. So each neuron layer in the uh, in, in that network is connected to all of the neuron in the next layer. The result of the each layer are going to be feed towards. To the next layer through the network until they reach an output layer. So that would be the final output layer that we are going to go and see it. 
So it's a complex kind of subject to understand, to get into the detail, but I'm just trying to tell you that how deep learning would be different from a traditional machine learning. So machine learning is a simple concept. You have a data, you apply an algorithm, and algorithm will try to find the relations among the attributes and the features, and then create a model, and that model can be used to predict. But here, it can go to the multiple layers of the neurons networks. You know to to basically uh, the predict more accurately by understanding the features of that particular object that has come as an input to the neural network. The multiple layers of networks interconnected to those neuron what we are looking at, but eventually it is just an X values going across those networks representing by a particular neurons within the network until we get the Y, the predictable values at the end. So what is the Y values in context of the ratio is one? So that is something what we need to see. So 0 0.07 would be the maximum one. Uh, so predicted probabilities you know, uh, value represent the actual class level. Uh, this is what uh, we get to see. So, uh, yeah, so this is what. Uh, the machine learning and. And deep learning is all about. So these are the conceptual understanding uh, but at this moment this course is not about deep learning and machine learning yeah so when you get into the dp100 uh, which we are sharing the best so in that course you will get into the detail of the machine learning so you'll understand how machine learning and deep learning works and subsequently creating the model so now getting into the Microsoft Azure. Machine learning. And now. So when you talk about Azure machine learning. And uh, in fact, this course is not for the. Uh, the participant or the people who are completely new to the Azure. So they must have know what is Azure that I have been talking about. So Azure is a Microsoft Cloud platforms and through that platforms we can get a lot of resources. Which is aligned with a different kind of workload. So workload could be an AI or a machine learning. What could could be a infrastructure workload could be a database or workload could be an app modernizations and so on and so forth. So at this moment, we are just talking about the AI workloads with the multiple resources that can be used, that can be consumed from the AI workload while I'm taking them to the cloud. The machine learning is one of them. So Microsoft Azure Machine Learning is a cloud service for training, deploying and managing machine learning model. So it is designed to be used by the data scientists, software engineer, DevOps professionals, and the other to manage the end-to-end -end life cycle of the machine learning project, including exploring the data and the preparing it for modeling, training and evaluating the machine learning model, registering and managing the training model, deploying and training model for used by an application and the service and reviewing and applying responsible AI principles and practices to those AI applications. Now, once you have provision and as your machine learning resources, you can use it in as your machine learning studio. The machine learning studio is a kind of UI driven uh, console through which we can do many things. So through the machine learning studio, we can import and export data. Create and 
use compute resource. We are going to talk uh, practically all of them. We can run code in a notebook. We can use visual tools to create job and the pipelines. And we can use automated machine learning to train model without writing any code by just uh, getting data. So we can view the detail of a trained model, including the evaluation matrix, responsible AI information and the training parameters. And eventually we can deploy the training train model for on request and batch inferencing. So you can also import and manage model from a comprehensive model catalog within the machine learning workspace, the workspace that we are going to build. The workspace is going to give us many services and with the help of those services, we should be able to train and uh, consume model from machine learning studio by having a compute who allow us to create model, who allow us to train data and so on and so forth. Now, as I explained before, also as your machine learning cloud service for accelerating and managing machine learning project lifecycle. An ML professional data scientist engineer can use it in a day to day workflow to train and deploy model. Manage machine learning operation like ML ops today. The ML ops is. Uh, OK, uh, you need to have. Uh, need an Azure. Uh, subscription. So. Yes, you can create an Azure free subscription. Also, you can go and find how to create as your free subscription. So once you create a free subscription, you should be able to try with the machine learning. In fact, if you have enroll, if you enroll for a DP 100, so they will take you through. Uh, uh, kind of, you know, so how to start. Working with not only just machine learning, the other related services, as I said, uh, custom visions or a Gen AI is what we have been uh, setting uh, as 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 an agenda for today's uh, webinar. So ML ops also one one of the most uh, kind of uh, demanding uh, the area today. The people started talking about ML ops means you will be creating a complete workflows the pipeline right from collecting a data and training the data, creating a model and deploying a model would be completely automated. And that is what is ML ops is all about. Like we talk about DevOps now specific to the machine learning, it would be called as an ML ops because the machine learning started with the data and the models and the algorithms and the predictions. So all can be automated by creating and workflows by creating. Uh, yeah, I mean like uh, the pipeline. Yes, you can always use machine learning in the free free account also. We just need to understand uh, the the quotas that is given to us to work with the machine learning. Otherwise, uh, you can work with uh, uh, the machine learning uh, related services that is available from the Microsoft Azure. So as I said, uh, you can create uh, a model in machine learning or use model. Build from an open source platform. Like 
the PyTors or a TensorFlows or the SkyKit learns. So this ML Ops tools help you to monitor, retrains and redeploy your model. So this is all about the workflow. So data scientists and ML engineer can use the tools to accelerate and automate their day to day workflow. Application developer can use tool for integrating model into an applications or services. The platform developers can use a robust set of tools backed by the durable Azure resource manager API for building advanced ML tooling. OK, so that is all can be done from here itself. Enterprises working in the Microsoft Azure cloud can use familiar securities and the role based access control for infrastructure. You can set up the project to deny access. To protected data and the selected operation. So these are all possible on Microsoft Azure because Microsoft Azure is not only going to give you the resources like machine learning services through which you can do a kind of complete ML ops. Complete workflow at the same time, it will protect your data, protect your resources with the help of their inbuilt securities like role based access control is one of them. So if you have a role, then only you can process or you can access. Otherwise, you won't be ac access to the resources under the machine learning, the workload. So it's a robust because uh, we we we. Mm, OK. Uh, I tried to uh, avail the free credit, but it could not verify my student account. OK, so you have to try like, you know, uh, there is uh, one way of creating as your is by having your student detail or you can go and create without going into the student account. So just a free account that you can go. I will show you how to create a free account. And uh, once you are creating a few accounts, so you should be able to go inside the as your. Subscription. So. As your machine learning is going to give us an workspace, the workspace organize a project and allow for collaborations for uh, many user. All working towards a common objective. User in the workspace can easily share. The result of their uh, runs from an experiments in the studio with the help of user interface, the life cycle that what we are talking about, it is going to be operated under the machine learning service with the help of machine learning studio. So we talk about the DevOps also for ML model, which is typically called, as I say, the ML ops is a process of developing model for productions A models life cycle from training to deployment must be auditable, if not uh, reproducible. So this is what a uh, few guidelines when you go with uh, ML ops, what uh, we are discussing. So machine learning is built with the model lifecycle in mind. So you can audit the model lifecycle down to a specific commit and the environment. So this is something what. Uh, uh, your DevOps for the machine learning will come into the picture. Uh, but apart from that, uh, what we are going to explore from the machine learning like notebook or automated MLs and designers, so you can create a model from either one of them. So notebook that will allow you to create a Jupyter, I mean, through a Jupyter notebook 
uh, where you can go and run the Python code in order to create a model, in order to test the models and so on and so forth. So we are going to see it and automated ML also step through a creating a machine learning model without writing a code. And another would be a designer gives you some kind of drag and drop way to build model using pre-built components. So till now we have been talking about enamel that is the fundamental of AIs, you know, so any kind of AI implementation, artificial intelligence implementations that we are going to do. Not only on Microsoft Azure, since we are talking about in context of Microsoft Azure. Uh, the Microsoft Cloud Platform, but in general also the AI is the I mean the ML would be the fundamental before we go into the AI implementation, because as I said, today's AI application is going to use the ML model, whether it is a small language model or it could be a large language model, like what we are talking about, the Gen AI, generative AI. So now we talk more on this. Uh, let's look into uh, what uh, the machine learning solutions or a machine learning resources and uh, what we can do in the machine learning uh, from the Microsoft Azure. So practically we are going to look at, as I said, if you have your own subscription or if you create it through the free trial, you can also do along with me what I'm going to go and do because uh, it's all about uh, a kind of configuring uh, or all about just following a couple of steps and understand what is going to be done uh, to achieve the final objective uh, under the banner of the machine learning workload, what we are discussing. So let's go into uh, my uh, workstation from where I can go and explain how to work with the machine learning. That is what
sorry i was disconnected in between so i'm just back now so let me share my screen with you so hope you can hear me okay so hope you can uh, hope you can see my screen now okay perfect so as i said that we have been discussing about uh, as your ml and the related tools through which we can create ml model and subsequently we can use those model in our applications to do the prediction but ml is is the beginning or a fundamental to the AI application. OK. Uh, so we are going to look at not only the ML today, so wherever the model is being used, like uh, uh, to predict uh, something um, based on uh, input data, and that prediction should be done by the model. The subsequently, uh, there would be other workload. So where we have to create our custom models in order to do the custom predictions and going into the generative AI. So first we'll go and take a look the machine learning. So if I go to my. management portal because this is where uh, like uh, you can also uh, create uh, as your free account So you can also go into this particular. Uh, so you get start free, so you just need to follow the steps in order to create. Uh, your. Uh, as your subscription. So you just need to go and look in. So as your free account, so the first link that you see. This is where you have to go and start free. That you can start creating. They will ask a few things and you just need to fill up the form and submit. Uh, so instantly you'll be taken into the portal dot azure.com currently where I am. So this is where you are going to see. The the list of. Uh, the services under the AI and the machine learning because today's webinar is all about AI and machine learning workload that is available on Microsoft Azure, but we are starting with uh, the model, the fundamental of AI, so working with the machine learning. Now, if I go to this portal, like I can create a new dashboard, suppose I'll go and create a new dashboard, I'm giving a kind of uh, AI, ML. So this is an empty dashboard that I'm creating under my subscription. That is the credentials that I use to get in my subscription. Now from the left hand side, I can look into the all service. And what are the service available today from Microsoft Azure? You can see AI plus machine learning. So this is the category I'm interested at this moment because this is what we have been discussing so far. So if I go to the AI and machine learning. You can see the list of the service under this category. You have the machine learning here it is. This is what currently we are talking about. So it's a workspace of where the manage all the models, assets and the data related to your machine learning project. Create one now to start using as your machine learning. This is the service that we get. 
But if you see the AI services, you can see the list of AI services available right from the Azure Open AI. So we talk about document intelligence. We talk about custom vision. We talk about content moderators, the bot service, which is the conversational one. Computer vision, something to do with image and the video analysis of what I talk about, detecting face by using a face API. So these are list of AI services, but all the services is backed by the ML model. So we have to start working with the ML model first, uh, and then we can talk about one of the service. So because this service is just an interface to us, so I'll be able to make a call through service, but the service is internally go and make use of a model. So whether it is a ready-made default model that is being given to us for those services or created, created our own model. OK, so that is what uh, the I will walk you through. So let us go to the first one called machine learning, because this is something what we are looking for. OK, this is the service that we have been talking about as of now. So if I go and create a new workspace under the machine learning, so it will tell me to create a resource group. The resource group is a logical container means all the resources that I'll be creating for my project would be sitting inside this group. So I can say a demo. ML group. So this is what you say the demo ML AI group. So I can give the name of the workspace. Demo ML workspace with a number. So this is the workspace number that I have given. I mean the name of the workspace that I have given, but there are a few dependency here. So I'll go and make use of. Uh, one of uh, my reason. Uh, that is, I can select any region where I want to deploy my workspace, but I'm selecting East US. So for dependency, they will go and create a storage account, create a key vault, create an application inside. Uh, and we do not want to create some kind of container registry and so on and so forth. Right, so this is the dependency. So all of them is going to, along with the workspace, these are the additional dependent resources is going to create under this resource group, the logical container that I have created. Now there are some additional configurations. I will just simply ignore them with the default selections that is being made and we'll go and create this workspace. So once the validation is done, so we should be able to create that machine learning workspace with a name that I have given. So deployment is started. So it will take a couple of minutes, one or two minutes maybe. Because it's not going to go and create only one resources. You can see it's getting created. It's created log analytics. It's basically to read all kind of logs from the workspace that we can evaluate any given point in times. So what was done inside my workspace? Right, so it can be anybody can come inside the workspace as long as that person has the credential to get access, but the monitoring engine is going to capture all the data related to the telemetries that is going to emit that is going to come out of uh, your uh, the machine learning, the workspace that we have deployed. 
The key vault is another service from Microsoft Azure to retain a kind of secret or to keep secret or keys. Uh, because rather than making a key available to all of us, uh, it can be stored in a secure places. And that is the key vault will come into the picture. Now, if I go to the resources, this is my workspace that I can see. In fact, uh, I can go and sort of. Uh, uh, if I go to my resource group. Where I have created this is the demo ML AI resource group. In fact, I can pin it to the dashboard also. So I can see what are the resources that I created from the dashboard itself. So we have. We have the machine learning workspace. We have an application inside. This is also a monitoring engine tools. We have the key vault to store the keys. If any key need to be used during the access of any kind of resources from my workspace, those key can be stored somewhere in the key vault. And log analytics where we are going to maintain the logs. And this is more on the application, but this is more on the infrastructure applications. Everything will goes inside the application log. So monitoring information, log information is going to retain inside the log analytics workspace. But we are now going to go and focus only one. That is my workspace that I have created. So I can click on that workspace to make it activate. But we talk about if I want to do things inside my workspace, I have to go to the studio, the ML studio. So ML studio will allow us to do all kind of machine learning operations that what we have been talking about, getting data, creating model out of the data by doing trainings and subsequently use this model to predict the outcome from the this is fx that y equal to fx what we have been discussing so your model basically encapsulate everything that we did at the time of training and it should be ready to predict something based on the incoming so i can go and launch my ml studio this is where we can see ml.azure.com like these are the so suppose we have been talking about few things. Uh, so from where we have started. So we have started from HTTPS. Portal.azure.com. This is where we started with. This is your as your management portal. So through the Azure management portal, we can go and manage the Azure resource. I can do it with the help of CLI also. Partial also by using with the REST API also, or maybe by using custom tool. A custom application. Possible to manage the cloud resource can be done by using either one of them. So we are using Azure management portal because it's a GUI based web application through which we can manage the Azure resources, including the machine learning workspace, what we have created. So it could be any resources under the banner of the AI and the ML, what we have discussed so far all would be managed uh, through the management portal. So here we get it. That was the first one. The second one. We talk about the ML Studio. OK, so ML Studio is responsible for 
all kind of activities right from getting data and training that uh, data using a model and then subsequently uh, publish the model and uh, use the model for the data prediction. So currently we are in the ML as your uh, ML dot as your dot com. So this is where we are at this moment. So I can see what is your workspace. The workspace name has come here. This is the detail of the workspace. As you can see under your subscriptions, the resource group under which the workspace is being created and so on and so forth. OK, so that is the name of the workspace that we said demo ML workspace. Currently we are here. Now. If I have to go and. Kind of. Uh, do the activity, so what kind of activities that you will be doing? The activities that uh, we might go and do something like. Uh, uh, suppose for. Uh, so we can go and make use of uh, automated ML. Now what is basically an automate? So let automated ML train and find the base model based on your data. Without writing a single line of code. So to what we are trying to do with the help of the automated ML. So I can just go and talk about them, then you will get the context. So automated machine learning enable you to try multiple algorithms and the parameter to train the multiple models and identify the best one for your data. So in this exercise, what we are going to do. So. Uh, OK, so we are going to. We'll use a data set, set of a historical bicycle rental detail to train a model that predicts the number of bicycle rental that should be expected on a given day based on the seasonal and meteorological features. So the two things initially we talk about. The first, we need a data. So here the data, what we are talking about, the historical bicycle rental detail. OK, so that is what. We are going to capture. But yes, the data would be represented by with the help of different features like uh, so that that is what we are going to look at. Features means like uh, the attributes like you are creating a table. The all the values inside the table is being represented by the column names. So we'll see that. So what would be the column names and attributes of those data? Who talks about the bi bicycle rental? Uh, kind of predictions in a particular day, like for example, the 31st January. 2023. So how many bicycle would be rented? from a particular vendor in a particular locations that people would be using those bicycle to roam around to do this. It is just one kind of use cases, so it could be any use cases that you can talk about. Right as far as we need to understand the machine learning related concept. So what machine learning will do on this data? So the second thing is that the machine learning is going to do. Train. This data. So it means this is what the data is going to be trained and then finally. That is what would be the output. And you can use this model to predict. Or maybe from consume so you can publish. 
the model and consume the model and then predict with prediction with right so this is what we are going to show. but when we talk about uh As I said, uh, in fact, when you go and look at this, it is saying to find the base model based on the data without writing a, a single code. This is what we have been talking about. And they try with the multiple algorithms that what we are talking about. So it says, so when I'm going to go and create a model, the train with and algorithms so this algorithms can come from a regression so this uh, algorithms come from a classifications so we are going to go and see but that is going to be done automatically we don't have to do anything or we can do by writing a code also both we can see it. but first we are going to look at the automated machine learning everything is going to happen for me by just configuring my the workspace that I have created for my machine learning. So uh, let's look at that then. Um, so if I go to my. Uh, the one here so I can go to my automate ML, so I have the options called. new automated machine learning. In fact, you can go and see what is basically automated machine learning that is given out there. So automated machine learning also referred as the automated MLs on auto ML is a process of automating the time consuming iterative task of a machine learning model development. Eventually I'm going to develop a model get a model it allows the data scientist analyst and the developer to build a ml model with the high skill efficiency and productivity all while sustaining the model qualities automated ml is as your machine learning in the based in the background from the uh yeah from the microsoft research division so anyway so this is what the big uh, advantage what we are talking about. So we don't need to explicitly do many things. So everything would be done implicitly for us. OK, so I'll go and create a ML job first. I will be giving a name of the job like the bike uh, auto ML. So here I say rental bike auto ML job. That is the name of the job. So you can go and see this. The job name field is used to identify your job and it is also set as a display name for your job, which you can change later. So we are about to create a job under the job. All the activity is going to happen. So what is the activities that I'm referring to? Kind of. Training the data, creating the model. So all is going to be happen as a job. 
and once you put them as a job, it becomes easy to monitor the job about the progress, about exceptions and errors while the job is running in the background. So while job is running in the backgrounds, we can do many things in this workspace because that is given as a job. So your task would be delegated at a job and it will keep on running under their own spaces. So we can give the name of the experiments here also. Here we say bike rental is the name of the experiment. And uh, I can write something in my description. And the rest is all OK. I can go to the basic settings. Now, in the PPT, we have learned different type of machine learning. OK, uh, we talk about regression and classifications and supervision, supervised machine learning and unsupervised machine learning. So at this moment, we'll be going with the supervised by default, but under the supervised, I can select what we want. So maybe I will go with the regressions to predict the continuous numeric value because I need to go and predict the number of bikes need to be made available by a particular vendor in a particular a day. And that is going to be predicted. I just need to tell my model to tell the answer or predict the number. So how many bikes need to be made available, reserved for a particular day with a given conditions? So we talk about the conditions like attributes, like whether it is a hot day or a cold day, about the temperature part of it, whether it is a particular season, is a winter or a spring or a summer, or whether it is a holidays or not. So that's kind of parameters is going to kind of, uh, you know, uh, complete this. Uh, Yes, uh, does this free? Yes. Uh, yes, you have to. Uh, you have to put the credit card details, so you need to need the. Detail it is for the verification only. And it is not going to be lifetime, so it would be a limited uh, period of time you'll get to know. Typically, it would be 30 days to one year. Yeah, so sometime uh, it would be, yeah, so depends like what type of uh, account that you are creating. So you can try with that, but yes, you can always start with at least the 30 days you should be able to work without any interruptions. So here we are going with the regressions. And uh, we are going to go and select the data set because this is where the important stuff that we are talking about. The historical bicycle rental details, so we need to get that data first. Because that data would be used. So I need to uh, in order to training so I can create my. So I can go and give the data set name. OK, this is my bike rental DS. And uh, it could be any descriptions that I can put here. So historic bike rental data or something like that. So that how we want to present the data would be tabular. So data set uh, asset that you can see that the machine learning. 
CLI V2 or Python SDK2 now includes the following data types, files, folders, and the table. So we can pick up data from the files. We can pick up data from the folders. You can pick up data from the table. So we select the table or format at this moment. Right, so that is uh, what uh, I get here and I can go to the next. So since I said. Uh, I can select one of the source from where the data is going to come, so I can select. The from the web files. Then I have to go and type. the URL, so in fact we can go and see. This URL by typing in. My browser, so this is the data. The first column talks about the date. The second column talks about the month and the third columns is years, seasons like across the seasons like uh, you know what season is all about and the holiday weekdays, uh, working days. So these are the kind of column under which those data is being used. And uh, it says uh, that day. The number of bike was rented this. This day the number of bike was rented this. This day is the number of bike was rented this. The last one is the rental number. And this is what we have to predict. So it means the machine learning will go and learn from this label data. Under the regressions algorithms what we are discussing at this moment. So machine learning itself will go and start learning from this data. OK, and subsequently. It will figure out the relations among all the features and try to kind of relate with the Y value because this is your X. And this is the Y that we talked about. That Y equal to FX, that is the mathematical, the formulas that we talked about, because these are all features. And this is what your Y, the ultimate one, what we are getting in. So this is the data that is gone, uh, that will go inside the machine learning algorithms. <clears throat> So yes, I can share the link out there. So just give me. OK. So this is where you can see the data out here. So HTTPS uh, aka.ms bike rental. So if you go there, you should be able to see this, uh, what I saw at this moment. So now we'll go with uh, this one uh, for, for the next. If they can fetch those data, we should be able to see. All the data would be populated. So this is what the table uh, what we are referring to. So we have been talking about the table. As you can see, this is what we get the table. So originally it was the file format was delimited, the comma separated encoding UTF, or we can just only the first file will have. So if you collectively getting data from the multiple sources, we should be able to get only the first file has the header options that we can select. So this is what the data source that uh, data that we are providing. Basically, we are giving it to the machine learning workspace. And then we talk about what type of data is being presented. So this is something, some example values and so on and so forth. These are the data type of those uh, data. So whether it is integer or a string or a decimals. And so on and so forth. 
And this is what the rental is the ultimate one, what we are looking at at this moment. So it's talk about only the schema here. Nothing more than that. So this is where it is. All is being all right now. So I can cut it. So with this one, the schema that we can see, I can go and edit if I want to edit. If I go and edit this section also, I can edit this section also. All of them would be editable. So, but we do not need to edit any one of them because all the configuration is right. So I can go and create this. So I'm creating that bike rental TS, the data set. So I should be able to see my data set right there. This is the data set that we have created. The bike rental DS, the type is tables and created on and modified on. So all the detail has come in. So there are 25 pages that you can see. Say so use data. So I can go to a, a kind of few settings that we can go and talk about, like now the regressions that we have to go and see it. So the tax type is the regressions. Data is the data source you can view from here also. Now the predicting would be the, the rental one because we are looking for the landed with the data type in teaser. That would be the target columns that we want to predict. And uh, the rest is all fine, so we can go with the additional uh, configurations. Normalized root mean square errors, so this is all okay. And uh, I can go and select a particular. Uh, this is what we say is a list of model and automated ML will not be used during the training. But here we can go and say. So until we go and select one of them, so I can use the random forest. And. Uh, light GBMs. So these are uh, basically your. Uh, algorithm that is going to be used to create the models under the regressions that we are talking about. So inside the job. So you can try with the multiple one that is like decision three and all kind of things, but here it is most used one, the random forest and the light GBN so that you can see what is all about. You should be able to get. I want to save this. So this is what uh, the additional configurations talks about. And uh, the rest is fine and now we just need to go and. Talk about the limits out here. It's basically I will go with all of them three so you can read it. What do you mean? So maximum number of trial. Each with the different combinations of algorithms and hyper parameters to try during the auto ML job. Now we learn in the beginning because auto ML is going to do all kind of permutation and combinations to come up with the best model applying the the varieties of algorithms you know so they will go and do it all over again but i am saying that this trial would be happen only three in between one to thousand because every time you go and make use of that there would be a compute resources will be consumed so you have to keep in mind also because nothing is going to come for free so this Trial is going to cost you if you have more number here, so we better we have to set the limit. 
Now the maximum number of nodes. So what is node basically? Uh, or before that, uh, the max concurrent trial also we can give it three so that we said concurrently how we can say maximum number of trial job that can be executed in parallel must be an integer value in between one to thousand. And the node also node is basically a compute options. So like eventually they are going to go and make use of the virtual machine. So we have to go and give the size of the virtual machines and we need to keep. Um, kind of one thing is very important. What size that we are using and so on and so forth. That is important. So that is your max compute one. And uh, yes, the matrix score. Uh, that I can go and work with the threshold. This is also. Uh, yes, basic uh, if it is uh, I give uh, 0 0.85. That is also going to talk about something when this threshold value will be rich of four and iterations matrix. The training job will be terminated. To keep in mind that is meaningful model have correlations greater than zero, otherwise they are as good as by guessing the average metric thresholds should be between zero and ten. So this is what I'm saying. Point eighty five that uh, a model achieve a normalized root mean square error matrix score of 0 0.8.4 or a less. And then the job is going to be N. So this is also going to go and maybe I can go and run up till 15 minutes. This whole operations. The iterations timeout could be five minutes. So I go with, uh, yeah, so maybe. In minutes I can say experiments timeout. Uh, that could be 15 minutes or here we can go and talk about. In minutes, so maybe I can say 15 only. So yeah, I mean like this is where we can go and talk about how my compute is going to be used. So if it is done early, so it would be terminated early rather than keeping my compute busy to work uh, internally. So essentially just to understand that because when you are going to train a model, the training model is a compute. So a lot of computation is going to go and happen in the background. For that we need resources. But how long I want to make my resource busy to do this job for me? You know, so that is basically directly proportionate to the cost. So more time that you are using the compute resource, you have to pay more. So it means you have to calculate that you want to terminate the job. After 15 minutes in any cost, so before 15 minutes they need to train the model. So we supposed to get a model out of that iterations in 15 minutes time. So that is something what we are talking about at this moment. OK, and. Uh, so this is all about the limits that we are uh, working at this moment. Uh, and then we can go to the validation is an. Uh, you can. Split the data into two. 
that last time we talk about the training data and the validation data. So percentage of the validation data would be only 10%. Like the 90% data is going to be trained and the 10% out of the data is going to be used for validating the model, whether my model is accurate or not. That is what we call as a splitting data out there. So with that, we can go to the next one. So we can select the serverless compute or we can go and use a particular type of. Uh, uh, suppose if I go into a compute instance, so if I go to the different type of compute instance, we can get to see the list of the virtual machines that I can go and create. But it is unpredict. I do not know whether a particular VM is appropriate for my computing or not. And that's how the new concept has come called serverless. So this is where we are going into a serverless means the serverless is not going to tell me. What is the ready made compute resource for me? It means it will keep on consuming resource from the Microsoft Azure as long as is needed by the workload. It is not prefix. It is actually pay as you go. So you consume more. You consume more, so it means you are going to get more out there. So. So this uh, in fact. In the server list one, as we can select the server list. So how many number of instance that would be happen number of instance that we are giving it one at this moment, but the standard DST V2 with a four core with four 14 GB of RAM, but that will go under the server list that will take up. And uh, yes, I mean like. Uh, as long as. I need the resources to create the model to train the data and so on and so forth. So we can see eventually this is the a review of the job. That we have configured so far. Multiple section. We can always go and step into one of the section and edit before we submit the job. So I'm submitting the job. So to complete the job will take some time and this is where we are going to take a break. So now we are going to take a break of 15 minutes and we'll be back in 15 minutes and we'll see because we have given a time of 15 minutes uh, to uh, complete the trainings and come up with the model. Because this is the experiments that we are doing the bike rental with the name of the experiments. So experiment is started running, but it will take some time to complete this. So now the data is being trained with my underlying uh, algorithms and that is happening in my. Compute that I have selected the virtual machines under the serverless. Uh, that what that that is what we have selected. So that compute is being used to uh, create a model do the training. It's a compute intensive job which is being doing. Uh, internally by the auto ML without any kind of interventions from us. So they will start applying the respective. Uh, algorithms uh, to to create to learn from those data. X and Y what we have discussed because my data goes with an X and Y, so features and the level. OK, so with that, uh, we we are going to take a break. So if you have any questions that so you can always put, put your questions into the team chat. So I'll be sharing at the end. So since I'm doing it now, so all this uh, what. Uh, how we are going to do it. Uh, I will be sharing it.
you can create your own VM. You can do in the local system as long as you can get that resources and all the data science uh, specific uh, tools, everything you can make it in on premise also. So there is no point of doing in the local system because uh, you do not know how many resources would be consumed. That's why the cloud is going to come into the picture. You can create. I will go and tell you how to create uh, any model, machine learning model locally by using Python code. So you need that infrastructure. On top of that, you need the SDK to get access to the machine learning and you need the data to do all kind of stuff like, you know, so we are going to see. Yes, uh, Python library is being used for uh, working with uh, ML models, training the models, reading the features there are different libraries that can be used from the python programming language to do things Yes, so uh, Azure has a lot of inbuilt model that is going to be used by the AI service. As I said before, also we can create our own model and there would be ready-made model which is being used by Azure AI service because all the activities the AI is bringing into the forefront with the help of model only. So default model is going to be used behind those services. Yeah, whether it is supervised or classified. Yes, yeah, so you will get model from all the categories. There is not called Python model. It's an ML model. Python is a language through which we can create model the Python libraries. So as a developer, we will make use of the Python library to create model. Or to create model, we need the data, we need the command, we need the libraries, we need the instructions. OK. So I will show you a few things uh, through a Python code, how you can create model in some time when you come back from the break.
So we'll take a break now. Yes, we need a Python. to work with ML. Uh, hello participants, uh, sir is on break till the time I'm sharing a uh, complimentary batch details on chat box. So guys go and redeem your batch. Guys, we already mentioned a step on chat box, uh, like how you can redeem that badge. So guys, go and redeem your badge. If anyone facing a problem, so let me know on chat box. I will be there to help you out. Uh, participants, uh, first you have to sign in on a Microsoft Learn account, then you can go with that URL which already mentioned on chat box. So guys go and redeem your badge. Uh, those who are done with the batch put done on chat box so I can see who are done with that.
uh guys if anyone still facing problem so let me know on chat box i will be there to help you out guys just you have to sign in on microsoft learn account and you can go with that url which already mentioned on chat box so those who are remaining go and redeem your batch Guys, those who are remaining, please redeem your batch. We are waiting for your response. Uh, guys, those who are not able to get the batch activated, uh, please follow the steps. I will show you all. Uh, you just have to go on Microsoft Learn. The first link which you will get, you have to click on that. If you don't have an account, you have to create the account. Like this, you have to go on sign in button. Here you can see on the right hand side, I will get the sign in button. If I have not created the Learn account, First, for that, first you have to create your Learn account. After that, you just have to click the URL which has been mentioned with the steps. You just have to uh, open that URL on New tab and you will get a pop up of Redeem. You just have to click on that Redeem button and the batch will get activated. After some time, the batch will reflect on your profile like this under the achievements. So this batch is for DP 100. Uh, so get your batch activated. And if you are still facing the problem, do let me know in the chat box. Also the batch uh, which you have uh, got activated, you can share that batch on your LinkedIn and other profile as you can see on the screen. I can share my batch on LinkedIn. Facebook, Twitter profiles. You will get the share option with the batch. Here you can see the uh, share icon through which I can share the batch on my profiles like LinkedIn, Facebook and all. Also, uh, besides the uh, let's say share icon, there is a print icon. Once I click on the print icon, I will get the print of my batch activation. The certificate which mentioned that I have completed the webinar with the date. If you want to take the screenshot of, 
of that uh, batch you can uh, print you can click on the print and take the screenshot or you can print the batch if you are still facing the problem please let me know in the chat box uh, we are here to help you out So guys, uh, those who are done with the batch, put done on chat box. Uh, participants those who have uh, activated the batch please mention done in the chat box so we can resume the session again we are waiting for you all to get the batch activated quickly put done in the chat box when you have come uh, once you have completed the redemption of the batch Yes, guys, please put done in the chat box once you complete the activation of the batch so we can resume the session.
Okay, so hope everybody done with your uh, the badge redemption. So once it is done. Uh, guys, I hope uh, each and every participant has activated the batch as it will be easy to access the batch and get the study material for this topic. So make sure you get the batch activated. And if you are still facing the problem, do let me know in the chat box. Uh, till the time, we will resume the session now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Satali. So, Yeah, so I have shared this, uh, the whole. Uh, the steps that you can follow it. Uh, I don't know why the next button is not visible. Maybe you have to go and check the additional configuration settings. So according to the steps that I have shared with you. OK, just to validate that once again. So I'm going back to my. <laughs> machine learning studio. So if you are having any issues, so you just start following this instruction. You should be able to do it. OK, so uh, coming back, as you can see, uh, my. The training is completed. I can go and get refreshed and we said this is completed. Created by me. The job type is automated ML. Experiment names and other detail, but most importantly, we need to look for this. The base model summary. And these are the algorithm that is being used because we have selected the ca uh, category of the algorithm like the regressions and. Uh, uh, so the uh, light GBM, so under that category, they have just pick up the best one. XZ boost regressor and a max ABS scalar. So this is the kind of. Uh, the algorithm name, so you have the hyperparameters. You can see this is where uh, hyperparameters is being selected to control this sampling is 100%. The percentage of input training data that was used to train the model. That's complete 100%. All OK. The run summary, this is. Now I can see the model because eventually we just need to go to the model and check. So if I go to the models. That we have created. 
So we haven't registered the model as of now, so we can go to the job itself. So I can go to the job here. <clears throat> I can see that is my current model here, which is completed there. Now, how am I going to use this model? So it means I need to deploy this model. So if I go to deploy, so I can deploy as a web service. The web service means anybody can go and make a call to the model by using HTTP request. That is how the web service will come into the picture. So I can give the name of the model. So here I can say the predict rental. And then we can write descriptions of predict the cycle rental or whatever we are doing. And then uh, where I'm going to run this content type so we can use this as your container instance because I said I want to deploy the model and I want to access the model using HTTP request because that's how I'm making as a web service. But web services to run somewhere. So I need again a compute to run my model. And in that context, so I'm using Azure Container Instance because the Azure Container Instance is one lightweighted options on Microsoft Azure where we can run the containerized workload. So we can uh, run my APIs, the model inside the container, and that container is going to run inside a service call as your container instance. So in order to call this API, we need to validate, uh, like uh, they need to have the keys. How to see the matrix of a model, so you can go and see there in the below. Uh, the matrix to see you can always go. I'm middle of something, so I'll come back and show you this in some time. So this is where you can see all matrix. So we select this as your container instance from here. And we put the enable authentication. So authentication means that my model is not going to be accessed uh, through an anonymous call. Anonymous call means uh, anybody wants to make a call to the model for any kind of predictions they want to do from their applications need to tell the keys to access this particular API, this particular web service. OK, so that is something that what we are talking about. Rest we can may leave it different. Diff and we can uh, default and we can deploy the model inside a container instance. Now, container instance, as I said, so it will take some time to create a container instance. In fact, if I go to my, uh, and I can go and refresh this, so you can see many things as popping out there. One more stuff would be a container instance. So this is getting created, deploying. So deployment is successfully triggered. It is running as of now. I can just keep refreshing. It should be completed. This is the deployment status that we can see out there. So instead of running, we have to get the succeeded. So to create a container instance back in my cloud, uh, resources will take some time because until you are deploying, you won't be able to test because you need an endpoint to make a call to test this one. 
So we'll go and see it. In fact, if I go to uh, the detail of these things. So we for testing, we need an endpoint. So endpoint has to come so far. Now deployment state is unhealthy in this operation state is running. So we just need to wait and see. The job ID is so it will take some time, as I said before also. still loading which is unhealthy at this moment so we need to kind of wait and So this state uh, to change will take some time. So until we get succeeded. So we just need to wait for some time. All right, so in the meantime, so what we can do, let it be done in the background because now my model is available. It is all about taking this model to a particular uh, context or maybe in our case, the target would be as your container instance. That is what we have selected. In fact, I should be able to see in my resource group the container instance will come. In my resource group, so in fact, I can go to the resource group. So I have to check that whether the container instances pop up or not. It will may take some time. So we have the container registry out there. But from the registry, it will go and create a container instance. So these are the things that we saw at this moment. So it's typically takes some time. Is the container registry. In fact, I can go to the container registry and take a look. So it has not come so far. Still running. That should be succeeded. Until it is succeeded, we won't be able to. is still unhealthy. So it's, it's currently unreasonable. So there is no way of because then only we can go to the test and take a look on the testing. So we have to come back later on. Now, in the meantime, what we can go and talk about how we can create model using the code. That is what we are going to look at. Because last time we discussed about the auto ML. So we did not discuss anything related to the code. Yes, it is a training model to get maximum accuracy. If yes. Yeah, so you need more data to get the accuracy by within. This is basically need uh, more training data.
Yes, I'm waiting for a couple of more minutes, so let's see. So let me go back again. Still, it is not getting my stuff here. OK. Still running. OK, so we put all of them in auto scale. It would be given out there, but now everything is done because there is no uh, only we are just waiting to get our uh, uh, container instance up and ready. So once it is up and ready, we should be able to test our model. The model has created model has trained the data. All is done. Only the last thing is that we just need to go. We are deploying the model that I should be able to make a call to the model as a REST API, as an HTTP request, uh, and that is in context of com container instance that we are working with. Uh, but uh, we'll come back to this in some time from now. In the meantime, there is another way of creating that entire the workflows from the notebook point of views like writing your uh, uh, what do you call it uh, so if i go and create a file here suppose i'm just giving a file name demo ml So where we are going to go and write the code. And we need to select the compute. For this particular code also. So we need to go and create compute. So I can go and create compute like yesterday we talked. I mean, sometime back we talk about. So that is your uh, compute name. Suppose I can go and see my. So 
So I just remove those. So we said, OK, what type of compute that you are looking for? So I can select. This is the categories. From the general purpose or computer, so I can select the standard DS. Compute the rest would be automatically this compute would be. Uh, shut down in 30, uh, 60 minutes like one hour. So we did not configure with any kind of security out there. No tags. And this is the detail I can go and create a compute. Now, why I'm creating a compute for my notebook? Because I'm going to start with my Python code. Like once we have done with the auto ML. Can we build a robust models using as your auto MLs? Yeah, auto ML is basically give you it's all about the data and bringing automatically the appropriate algorithms by giving a pointer what type of algorithm that you want to use. But you will not get more control as of now in the auto ML. See, it is coming as a service from Microsoft Azure. Remember that. OK, so it is not customizable. So what has come at this moment from the service that is being given to us? So we can make use of those features and functionalities. So if you want more than that. Of course, you have to go and. Uh, sort of. Uh, uh, create your own code. You know, to 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 to. To create your models with your own hyper parameters or own. A uh, kind of the frequencies and so on and so forth. OK, I'm just trying to give you an insight what is possible at this moment from the Azure Machine Learning Studio as an Azure Machine Learning Service. Right, so auto ML would be a quick one to create. Your uh, general uh, models without going into more robust model. But if you want to really create the model according to your own parameters, then you have to do it programmatically and you have an inbuilt notebooks. Uh, in that particular. Uh, machine learning studio itself, so you can just. Go and create your. Uh, a code now you see this compute is up and ready at this moment. So we can see here. So detail of the compute also you can get it. Suppose if you want to see the detail of the compute, you can go to the compute here. So you can see this is the compute that you have created some time back. So what is the details? Of this compute that you can see. Under which subscription that compute resource got created. It's a paid. OK, so it's a CPU. It's nothing to do with GPU because until analysis you are working with some kind of uh, GPU intensive work. So this would be a general purpose estimated cost. So this is the compute instance that we are working with standard DS3 V24 core 14 GB of RAM. So it means my the model training is going to happen within this virtual machines. OK, so that is what or we can create a cluster of machines also. But that depends. Do you have your uh, the compute capacity under your subscription or not? This is extremely important. OK, so the subscription that I'm using with a limited resources, so I'm going by only one single VM rather than creating a cluster of VM. But you can still go and create a cluster of VMs if you want for the bigger training that you want to do with the bigger data, with the bigger hyperparameters and so on and so forth. So eventually it is all about 
the kind of underlying compute resource that you are going to use. The more bigger trainings, the, the bigger resources that. But yes, cloud is going to give you unlimited resources. Until you are running out of the quota that is given to you to your subscription. But the cloud is going to give you anytime the unlimited resources and you can make use of it. So that is the compute that we are going to use from the notebook. That is selected from here itself. So detail out there and we are ready to go with. Now before the starting with the notebook, we select the Python 3.8 SDK V2 because we have the other option also. Like the PyTorch and TensorFlow R. So I can use all this, the, the language and the libraries. So in order to create the workflow for uh, ML model, but this is being used as a Python developer. We are going to go with the traditional one. And uh, what would be the first thing that we need to do? We need to go and connect the the workspace that we have created for all of them. All the activity that we are going to do that would be accountable for the workspace. Now where my workspace is available, I can see here. So this is the detail of my workspace. I can copy the subscription key. I can paste it here. And the resource group name also under where this particular uh, work uh, workspace got created, ML workspace that I'm talking about. And the name of the workspace. So I might have a multiple workspace, but we need to figure out under which workspace would be accountable for all the activities that we are going to do now onwards. So this is what uh, the ML client is going to be used in multiple occasions in order to connect with the underlying resource to do this activity. So I can run this piece of code. This is perfectly fine. It is all OK. Then I can go and. The next a code and here we can say. Whatever the workspace that we got connected by using ML client. So I want to print that. I want to see that. Yes, this is the name of the workspace and that is available in East US. Then we can create it now. The model deployment script. So we can go and. Create a, a folder that is with a name called SRC. So that is what is going to be created. In fact, if you go and refresh this, you are going to see the SRC folder. And inside the folder, we are going to go and create a file by the name called main. And put this content there. So if I go there below. So we are writing into a file called main.py inside the source folder, SRC folder. And these are the kind of libraries that we have imported because this is the script that we are writing to train our model with the data. And this is what input arguments that we are talking about, the train ratios that we are talking about, the defaults required path to the input data. So we are going to go and get the path as an arguments. It's the estimator learning rate and all those things. So if you are having a background of the ML, so I'm not going to go and because here we are not going to discuss more on the. Uh, the core concept of the ML. So here we are more focusing on the Azure. Uh, you know, so what has given by the Azure to quickly create the pipelines of uh, of our ML model. So that would be the primary focus here. So but yes, this is the script through the Python code. So you are logging all those uh, data and. You are preparing 
the input data where you are going to go and create the model out of it. And then you are going to do a train the models default. This is a kind of data uh, that is coming from the credit history of a, uh, the, the, the bankers, you know, so based on the credit history, so they will be taking a decision. So whether more credit would be given to that person or not, based on the credit history, whether they are defaulter um, of the credit card. And uh, so how am I going to react to those individual if they are coming under the defaulters with the credit histories? So this is the kind of model they are creating to predict the defaulter by uh, looking at the credit history. So the credit history data will come from a particular uh, the source and the source is going to come at the time of. Uh, uh, train the model, so but here is just a skeleton. The all the data would be passed from the outside. So how am I going to go and train the model by using? Uh, those. Uh, the library function, so you need to go and take a look what functions and how the libraries that is called sky kit learning from the ml flows this is how registering the model via ml flow within the workspace and that could be saved uh, the model to a file and once the model is being kind of uh, created with the help of training but the incoming data is going to come the path to input data. OK, so this main file is going to be used from somewhere. Now we are just creating the file only so I can go and run this. This is uh, what we are creating. This is a script handle the processing of the data splitting into a test and the train data. And then it's consumed the, this data to train a tree brace the tree base a model and return the output model. So ML follow flow here it is used to log the parameters and metrics during the pipeline run. OK, so that is all good at this moment. So that is writing into the main dot py. So now with this main, we should be able to go and uh, kind of a train this model so we can see this file would be coming here. So we can. Make use of this main file. That is the. Main files with the input data that you can see the data will come from this source for the training. This is what the command is being built. So you have a job with the input, the type of uh, the data, the source of the data, that is URI files. This is the actual value from where we are going to read the data. The ratios and learning rate is being given out there. The location of the Python main.py, and these are the parameters that we are giving, which is being written in that so this is where the environment that we are referring to. And the display names of the model would be this one. The credit default prediction model that is going to come. So with that. So this is just a command that we have, so I can just. Register the command and I can go and. run the job and the job is going to go and create the model eventually and now once the model is created the next is the deploying the model like last time we did so i can go and run this it will again take some time in fact uh, you should be able to see the detail also it's going to give me a link out there so there is another link for this So this is being queued, so it will again take 10 to 15 minutes to complete this. Because this is also a, a kind of. Uh, 
the compute uh, that is happening in the background to create the model. So once the model is ready, then next is to this is to deploy the model and the test the model. But in the meantime, I can go to the previous one. So what happened to the previous one? So let me uh, not this one. If I go back to my automated ML, so this is automated ML job. So let me check this one. It is completed now. Uh, no, that is not that one. So if I go there. Succeeded is coming. Now it is healthy that you can see all OK. That is it means if I go to my. Uh, what do you call it uh, in my Azure? So we'll get a, Yes, that is my container instance that you can see where my model is available inside this container instance. I was talking about. OK, so it's a container instance. No, oh, yes, so why it is running slow because. Uh, uh, it is a infrastructure to provision a infrastructure for the first time. It will be so because it is not pre created, you know, so you have it will it will take some time to uh, create the infrastructure. And of course, the time consumption in any way we are setting 15 minutes. So it's a uh, uh, for for. Uh, the complete model so to, to to train the data and create a model anyway is going to take some time but creating this uh, this this the computer uh, container instance also going to take some time because it's an infrastructure now if i go to the container instance and i can go to the container so i can see the details so so this is what the predict rental is up and running. That is the. That is what we need to see the status means all good. So it means so we can make a call. On this particular public IP address because it is like a VM where you have gone and deploy your web service, but I can do it because this is the same URL that we are going to get it. So if I go to the. Uh, test one, you are going to get an URL now. So this is where uh, you can go and get your data. So here is a detail. This is the rest endpoint. And now if you go and copy the rest endpoint into the notepad, you'll get to see what I'm talking about. Now this is the name of the. So if I go to my. OK, so this is what the FQND they have given out there. See, this is the name. That is given 4267. OK, this is the fully qualified. Domain name that is given for this public IP address where my API is up and running. API means my model is up and running. Now precisely I can make use of this because this is what. We are using from here. It's is container and the score. That is what we are looking for. It is automated out there. You can copy this also. You're going to get the same one. Only we are concatenating the score. With this FQND mm -hmm. with an HTTPS because we'll be making a request through uh, HTTP one. Now I can go to a kind of uh, Suppose I want to test this. So what I want to test. I want to predict. The number of. Bike that I need in a given date. So suppose my. The day one, the first January. 2024. Need to be predicted with the number of bicycle that we are going to rent on that particular day. So if it is holidays, then how it is being specified, it could be one or zero. 
the season. So I can say that is one also. So whatever it may be, so you can go and predict this. So temperature, the humidity is and working days and how this data is signified. So we need to go back and represent the data out there. OK, so we can go and test this. So it says you need. 227 bicycle ready on that day. OK, so that is the number which is being predicted. Now, if I go and. Season two and the month somewhere in. Four. And the day one, the first April, that is 2024, that I want to go and test it. So I'll give a more because in the summer day, this is where the more bicycle would be required because it's a, it's a, it's a kind of the April in the month of April. So the, it would be a pleasant weather where the more bicycle would be needed. Now this is something interesting of what is being done by the machine learning as you see out there. Right, because the machine learning has learned from the data from the, the historic data. And it is being published as a model. And this model is being up and running in a REST API in a, in a, in a particular endpoint. And my application, let's assume this is my application who will tell me how many bicycle would be a uh, reserve or maybe how many bicycle we have to keep ready on that particular day. OK, so that is something that you need to go and take a look and do this whole process. So this is what we have completed this because this is how uh, we can talk about because since we are working with the auto ML, all is being inbuilt. You know, now the model has gone and your any application wants to consume the model, which is up and running here inside the container instance. And giving this particular uh, FQDN so I can just consume from my application, maybe a mobile applications or web applications. You just need to make a rest call. So what is the API that you are calling is this is what you are. And you're taking an input value for that because it's give you everything. Right, so this is just a, the URL and in fact you can go to the Swagger URL also. So this is what uh, is given out there. So it will give you that uh, the metadata of this particular uh, service from the Swagger one. So this is the resource that is being used in uh, ACI, like uh, if you go to the because the ACI that we have created at this moment is uh, configurable with uh, the kind of resources that we are having in. So container count is two, so you can see the details out there. It talks about number of CPU, the memory size and so on and so forth. And it would be a kind of. Uh, uh, created at the time of uh, creating this container instance, so I can increase the number of CPU. I can increase the the size of the RAM to run this model. But at this moment, that is the default that took out there. So once it is being deployed. So uh, the scaling is not uh, available for computer instance. Uh, container instance at this moment, so we need to kind of uh, recreate and to update the size of this particular uh, bigger, uh, the container instance. So we need to go and check this out. Uh, how we can make this container instance scalable. There are other um, 
services also on Microsoft Azure that you can make use of those services to run your uh, ML model. OK, so that is done. So this is perfectly all right. So now we can go to the next one where we are working. So it is cute now refresh. I think it is it should be completed now. So it means your model is ready out there. The registered model. So credit defaults, the version is one. This is the model that you can see. This is also can be deployed as a web service. Again, creating a kind of another computer instance where you want to go and deploy this. Yes, this is the model that you get it. So you can go to this model and try this model also like, you know, I can go and deploy as a web service again. That I can take this one. ACI. So I can go and select the computer instance once again, enable the authentication. So we just need to go and select this time. So this will require the entry script because the parameters is asking out there. So that has to be done programmatically only because that option is not the script is not available at this because we need to use. Uh, the script that, that we have created uh, for uh, deploying the model, it's not like an auto ML. So we can go back to our notebook once again. So I can go back to my where we have started. Now this is the whole code. The deployment is done. So this is what finally we actually deploy. Uh, finally we have gone and create the models. So model is up and running. Now before you use the model, you have to go and deploy the model. But I can go and write a couple of. So I can clean my output. I can see. Uh, so what would be kind of. Uh, Uh, so before I, uh, sorry, uh, so we need to create an endpoint in this case programmatically where I want to deploy the model. Uh, and uh, we are making a unique name, but the actual creation of the endpoint has to happen by writing a script here. This is where uh, the endpoint is going to be created credit default names and all these things by using. So. So your endpoint is going to be created now. So once the endpoint is going to create, probably you should be able to see this endpoint. The rest is that you are ready to deploy. It's still running, it will take some time. So this is extract the endpoint creations to take few minutes. Anytime if you create an endpoint, so it will definitely take some time because that endpoint has to be validated.
Right, so we are just waiting to complete that. So until I get the endpoint provision states that need to be print there. I'm just making it one more time. So this is the different style of programming. So what we did so far, we connect to the. The workspace by having a detail because the workspace will have all the accountabilities that we are going to use the Microsoft Azure resources. We have created a training script. The training script will take some parameters like the data and the other detail. This is what and finally we are running inside a job with the help of ML client. And that is going to give us the model. So we saw the model by going in there. The model name has given out there. And now we need to go and deploy this model into an endpoint. But before we deploy the model, we have to create an endpoint. And creating an endpoint would be going like this. OK, so that is what the endpoint create an online endpoints that the people can browse or people can make request. So this endpoint state is succeeded. That is the state that we have printed. We can also use a kind of client. to see the status. The succeed is receive of this particular uh, endpoint. The endpoint is all right. Now we just need to go and deploy this. So we can pick up the latest version of my model. So we can see the version number one. This is the first version of the model because as of now we have created only one model. So we didn't we did not recreate the model to get a new version. So this is the version. Now we should be able to deploy it. But in my case, I'll be running out of the compute resources in my subscription because I have already other compute is up and running, so I won't be able to kind of get compute because uh, if you remember that we have got a standard DS2 V3, that is what we have selected uh, in the beginning, uh, but uh, I will not have that many compute resource in my subscription to complete this deploy. Means I'm looking for a particular virtual machines where I'm going to go and deploy this particular model. The model name is given as a color names to blue, yellow or red or whatever it may be. Endpoint names. And the model actual model. This is basically a display name. And the instance type the where the model is going to get deployed and the number of instance would be one. It could be any numbers, but I'm sure this if I go and run this particular. Command. I'm going to get an exception because I'm running out of the quota. Under this, but yes, you can try doing this. On your own subscription, if your subscription allow you to. Uh, uh, create. Uh, the instance uh, to deploy it, then definitely. Uh, it should be all right, but I still go and run it. So. 
I am. Yes, so that is what the exception. So if you read that exception, so you are going to get clearly. Uh, the exception says. Uh, you need eight numbers, so I have currently a four under this subscription. The additionals needed is eight. So eight core I need more. So it says VM size is not enough quota available for the standard DS3 V2 in this subscription ID that I'm working on this. I knew that that is going to happen because I have already used the compute resources in my previous experiments. So I'll be running out of the compute resources, but yes, I mean, so once that compute resources is not, then you can go and kind of test your, uh, so you can go and so I can clean it up. And uh, you can create uh, a kind of directory like deploy there. And uh, you should be able to create a test file. This is what the test data that you are going to evaluate. That is the sample request JSON input to test this and eventually you can go and do the testing, but since we are not able to deploy the model, we won't be able to test it with my sample request JSON. And the deployment name was blue. If you remember that, so this only two step remain. So if we could have deployed this, so we could have gone and make use of this, but the deployment has a problem with the limited resources. We have to clean up everything and then do it one more uh, time than it is only possible because they are asking for an eight core. Uh, currently, I have got only four core available, so explicitly given out there. So all this file is created. You can see under my. This is the sample JSONs and this is your main PI. As of now, what we have been working so far. OK, so. This was a done typically we left with only the test. The model got created. You can see your model is there. With the version one. So ML flow types. So you should be able to and another model. We have the bike rental. This is one the model that we have creating with the custom one. So this is the experiment, the different one which both is sitting in the same workspace. OK, I guess uh, you got this. Uh, kind of the con uh, the concept what uh, we need to discuss like in context of the Azure machine learning. Uh, services available on Microsoft Azure. OK, so that is what we need to do and I'll be sharing the steps of uh, what I have do, uh, didn't done it programmatically. So you also can go and test it with your own environment. So that is something that you can see. Which is there in the Microsoft documentation, so you should be able to. Get started with that, so. I'm just sharing that you can go to that link. OK, so we will come to an end of this today's. Uh, webinar. So that is we supposed to do. So if you have any questions so far, you can just put it and I would like to hand over the mic to the Satali if you are there, if you need to announce anything. So we have a couple of minutes to go. 
uh, thank you sir for this wonderful session i hope all the participants found today's topic uh, which was hosted by navjyoti sir guys if you have any question and query please feel free to ask as our speaker will provide you best uh, and also i share this feedback form so guys go and fill this feedback form if you like this session Guys, those who are remaining, please fill this feedback form. Uh, we value your feedback to continuously improve our webinar. So, guys, go and please fill this feedback form. Yeah, so I would like to thank everyone for attending today's session. So hope to see you guys uh, in an upcoming session.
Okay, so I hope all the participants fill the feedback form so we can wind up this session. If you are still remaining, fill this feedback form.